few years ago in in Norway there was this rocky formation that uh, locally was just called uh, the Trolls Deck. Hello and welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with myself Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude but efficient, and Hovar from behind the mistakes. Did you forget <laughs> <Woo-hoo>! my handle? <laughs> Only for a split second, KJ. That's the longest split second I've heard. And nobody <laughs> would have noticed because I could have edited that out, but you've made it impossible now. Thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, can, you can edit this out, well, out as well. I mean, you have the power to play God on this episode. I know, it's whether I've got the inclination. How are you doing, fellas? You doing, doing well? Brilliant. I mean, a recording on a Monday, that's uh, refreshing. I know, right? Yeah. Well, it's too much Monday, still. I don't know what people are on about. Mondays are great. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you had home office. <laughs> it's almost like we've already had a discussion about Mondays already, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all the second <laughs> take of the recording this night. <laughs> right. we, only, we only wasted five minutes, though. That wasn't too bad, was it? It wasn't a waste. I mean, you could still use it, but yeah. for some reason you refused to. I feel it was a, just a good warm-up. Ah, yeah. That's good. We can make an interactive episode where you uh, re- record different intros, different topics, and then the listeners, and I don't know how we pull it off technically but they could choose <laughs> like in those video games where uh, the end result is based on your choices let's do that on your edit <laughs> 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 or maybe not <laughs> let's just go for a straight down the line missionary episode for me thank you very much <laughs> you're so vanilla <laughs> crude but efficient <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, if we get to uh, a thousand listeners or something like that, I'm willing to to make an effort and actually make a choose your own adventure episode. But yeah, yeah, you chose a, a good number there, didn't you? Yes, uh, yes, I have learned <laughs> from other people's mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so, KJ, what have you been up to? Uh, well, since last last we spoke, I feel like I had. Uh, uh, I've had a cultural onslaught uh, because I watched three movies and went to see a musical as well. So I'm up to the brim with uh, with well, with cultural thingies. So that's that's great. <laughs> How was the musical? Was it Liv- the Living Dead? Uh, uh, Evil Dead. Evil the Dead. musical. It was uh, more or less exactly the 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 movie that I guess everyone has seen, um, and in the same uh, low tech level of uh, of special effects as well uh, <laughs> as the first one. So they, I mean, they had all the things with him chopping off his hand and they were cutting off heads and that sort of thing. <laughs> and they had a, the splash zone, the first three rows, and. I mean, it wasn't that much blood until the final, um, the final number, where Ash killed all the zombie demons, <laughs> and he, he was waving the chainsaw around. Us, and as soon as one of the demons were hit, they just oh, and they they had like a bag of blood, and they turned to the audience and squeezed it as hard as they could to just <laughs> squirt a couple of meters over. Yeah, some of them had uh, blood in their mouth that they spit at the audience and. Some just got oh, bored and gosh. took a cup of blood and threw it at the audience. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone you, seemed really happy. <laughs> were you in the first three rows? No, no. <laughs> we, uh, I think we chose row six, yeah. So we were just outside. We, we later saw that there was the tarp on the floor as well, <laughs> just below <laughs> it. So, yeah, so it was uh, really fun. Um, there were great, great singers as well. So it was, it was a nice experience. Uh, made me wish, miss the theater quite a bit, but on the making side, I haven't had uh, had that much. Uh, I started we're on the third part of the garden dividers that I've made out of three millimeter steel sheets. Um, so that's 
playing around with the welder at least. That's something. I, and, nice. and I've disassembled an uh, old chandelier. I think you can call it chandelier still, because it's rather small, but still it's an old uh, light fixture uh, hanging from the ceiling, mostly brass, I think. Okay. Uh, but I mean, the, the cables were kind of rotted, and the light fixtures were wonky, and I mean, they were a mix of uh, ceramics and uh, what's it called? That old kind of plastic that's really brittle. Oh, Bakelite. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Bakelite? Oh, is that what you say? Lovely smell right? of Bakelite. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, Bakelite is called in Swedish, so it's the same word, but I would never have pronounced oh, okay. it Bakelite. It sounds like <laughs> something you would use for cakes. <laughs> It really does, yeah. I yeah. thought that yeah, was yeah. one of those so uh, play kitchen ovens for the kids. Wasn't that called Bakelite? <laughs> it, it should be. It should know. be. <laughs> yeah, you know, but... sometimes when you, you think you know a word, but then you just realize that you've just heard it wrong for years. So maybe that's the case. I don't know now. I'm, I'm a little but, bit unsure of myself. <laughs> I hope that our audience will uh, will set us straight. But yeah, yeah so now but, I have a disassembled uh, chandelier as well. And what are you going to do with that? I'm going to try to get some replacement parts and, and okay. uh, fix it up, hopefully. Nice. <laughs> because it, it could be nice, I think, if I get... But yeah, I have some plans, but it's just a matter of finding a, uh, a bulb holder that is small enough that I can actually shove down the holes that are rather small. Right. And I th- I, all the ones I've been looking at, oh yeah, this is just 24 millimeters. Yeah, but then I would have minus one millimeter hole if I drill it out because <laughs> the holder is so small. So, yeah. I'll figure something out. Yeah. Well, that's the... It's a bit uncanny, really, because I'm going to do some light fixture work my, myself because we are waiting for a new table. So we sold our kitchen table last night, so we had... Uh, dinner on the floor today because the other <laughs> table is going to be uh, delivered tomorrow um, we're a picnic family now <laughs> yeah. uh, we are uh, going all Chinese uh, <laughs> and of course uh, a few years ago I had a period where I made a lot of light fixture out of cast iron plumbing parts mm. like real industrial look and of course I made a long version to uh, to match the long table that we have but now we're going with a, a round oak table so the light fixture doesn't really fit but i like it so i'm thinking we just shorten it down so it fits better to the size of the table so that's the plan and you've bought a table and you're the table guy you could have made one <laughs> yeah i know but oh, i'm <laughs> fed up with tables um and <laughs> We found this one. I've, I've seen it uh, a couple of times in this store, and it, I just stumbled over it uh, a while ago, and it was on sale. And I could not have got the materials cheaper than uh, what I paid for the table, with uh, two plates and a, a support leg and everything for when having guests over. You can extend it, and um, we just thought, well, what the heck let's just get it because we wanted one for years so um and it is it is proper oak as well so i mean not not that fake oak no so that the the kids can like have at it and after a few years when they grow up you can actually just uh, sand it down and you still have a table for the rest of your life it's not uh, those veneered uh honeycomb cardboard core whatnot <laughs> So yeah. you can you can chop it up for spare parts if you're sick of it as well. Yeah, exactly. Or use it as firewood or yeah. You ain't ever resanding that table. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's got time for that. <laughs> well at well, that point the kids will be old enough to do it. Yeah, and by <laughs> that time I have one of those uh shape or origin so i just make like a big compass <laughs> rose or uh <laughs> some intricate uh, inlays or something you just start making excuses don't you say no let's not sand it that those marks represent our life for the last 10 years <laughs> they have memories <laughs> you know that's very likely <laughs> going to be yeah. the scenario yeah do you yes, remember when the kids yeah 
<laughs> just pour three millimeters of epoxy all o- over all of it, <laughs> then they're <laughs> enc- encapsulated in time. Yeah. <laughs> so what else you been up to then, Eva? Oh, uh, I have. I didn't think I really had a very productive weekend, but I I really had. I um, I bought steel, uh, and I had a session yesterday where I where I cut them up. So I'm gonna make. Um, what's it called? A, a firewood rack or something? I just uh, quick and dirty out of some uh, steel square tubes. Um, and I also cut some brackets for the seat for the the tractor build. So that's what I did before uh, this uh, recording session tonight. I was actually welding that to the frame of the tractor and making like these small ears for attaching the the rear fenders. So uh, that's coming on uh, nicely. That project, isn't it? Yeah, it's ooh, it turns out really good. The I did make the seat bracket out of two. 40 millimeter square tubing so it doesn't match the rest of the frame but it's going to be hidden under the seat and it fits the width of that groove in the seat exactly so you can actually move it back and forth to adjust the oh, wow. uh, the position although <laughs> that seat is not uh, very ergonomic for a grown adult but <laughs> it, it looks awesome and uh I made so that those square tubes, they, they stick out a bit at the back of the seat. So if you want to uh, mount uh, uh, LED lights in them or uh, when we're getting closer to New Year's uh, and uh, you can get some hold of some uh, rockets or fireworks, you can <laughs> stuff that in there and make it look really good because there's going to be a winter video of it as well. So, That's yeah, awesome. there are plans. <laughs> <laughs> So what's what's left to get you over the finish finish line with it all? Um, I think I just finished the welding tonight. I I can't. I mean, I I can always weld stuff to it, though, but uh, <laughs> um, the plan is tomorrow. I think uh, I'm gonna put some hammerite on all the surfaces I ground off to to weld, and then I have to. Uh, drill holes in the dog ears I made to to fasten the fenders and and the seat, but that's it. So, sweet. Maybe if the weather is nice, I'm gonna just hook up the fuel lines, which is the only thing that's remaining, and then fill petrol on the tank and give it a go. Are you gonna fit it with a wheelie bar as well? It looks uh, it looks like it wants to wheelie, judging by your Instagram posts. Yes. Um, <laughs> When I was testing where the seat uh, wanted to go, I'm I'm sitting right over the axle. And um, many years ago, I I bought a monkey bike, which is these really small yeah. motor mopeds. And I remember sitting right over the rear wheel of those. And I mean, you could do wheelies in all gears. And I, I'm not a, a wheelie guy. I don't have that kind of control. So I need <laughs> to have some wheelie bars on it. So that might happen at some point. That's awesome. Have well, you yeah. figured out the sleeves for the wheels yet? Yes. So I'm not finished welding. Um, <laughs> the size of the tires is they don't make drift sleeves for it. And of course, you can look for PVC pipes or something. But PVC pipes at that size are crazy expensive. So if you don't know an entrepreneur or a plumbing company that have some leftovers, I mean, you can't really buy it for less than several hundred pounds a pipe wow (laughs) so i figured out the local hardware store they have some sheets of 1.2 millimeter steel and the length of that is just enough that i could make it go around the table so i just need to cut that into some small slits and just bend the ends together and just tack weld it uh, all the way over so and then ground it smooth and so yeah i have a plan and um Some yeah potential for sparks as well then with it being metal i've seen a guy doing metal sleeves on a youtube video and it was disappointingly little sparks oh. but i mean <laughs> do you get sparky steel <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't uh 
have that uh, in-depth knowledge of materials. So uh... you used to get um, sparky knee sliders for your motorbikes, didn't you? You know the knee protectors. You used to get ones that sparked when they touched the ground. Yeah, but then I again, I haven't heard of that. But sure, yeah. <laughs> maybe <laughs> you could get thing. some kind of coating on. I don't know. Yeah. That'd look brilliant. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna make an effort to weld that up before the weekend because uh, my wife said she's going away on Sunday and she offered to take both the kids so I could get some uh, workshop time. And if I manage to get the tractor done by that, um, I'm not, I'm not going to have workshop time. I'm just going <laughs> to ride around the neighborhood on my small tractor. <laughs> now something happened to Glenn's audio, I think. Welcome to this week's... <laughs> Third take of the number one crude mistakes podcast. <laughs> uh, where were we? Sparks? Did we finish the spark conversation? Yeah, I, 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 think, I think we so. finished the spark conversation. Uh, so yeah, then it's up I to think. you, Glenn. What have you been doing maker wise this week? Oh, maker wise. Oh, that's that makes it easier. I've been <laughs> working on the chestnut table, chestnut piece of wood. <laughs> But it's getting there. It's getting there. So what's the progress? So I did the scary cut. Hmm. The uh, Cut the shelf off the back of it. That went well in the end. After having waited four days for a circular saw. The circular saw was brilliant. It cut square, but it uh, still didn't have quite enough bolts in it to get through the chestnut in one pass. Ah. Yeah, but no, I got it, I got it cut straight. And then... Um, yeah, made some C channels out of some box section for um, yeah to go underneath it to stop it cupping. I looked at the price of um, C channel for tables, and it costs a bloody fortune. There was one set on Amazon which was one hundred and fifty-seven pound. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's right. what I thought. That hey, sounds like a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I got a tenner's worth of box section and cut it in half on the table saw, and there we go. I've um, drilled it and slotted it tonight as well, so mm. yeah, and I've cut the grooves out for the uh, for those for the ch- for the C channel. So yeah, it's getting there. I'm the hope is that it's gone on Friday. That's what I'm working towards. So that'd be nice. Although it depends how nightmarish this edit turns out to be, doesn't it? As well. <laughs> <laughs> how long have you had it now? Is it? Like a I, month almost? I, this is either the fourth or fifth week. That's a long time. Yep. <laughs> I don't know how the hell Blacktail Studio makes filling her piece of wood with epoxy entertaining. I honestly don't. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't know how he does it project after Movie project. magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a big workshop, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, doing that. You know, every, every time you do something, every time you do a project, it's the same thing. I could not do that at all. No, that would be boring. I mean, and also make videos out of it, trying to make it interesting. I mean, yeah. I, I could probably set up a shop knocking out tabletops left, right, and center, but yeah, it would be boring. So I wouldn't like <laughs> stress <laughs> myself. All right, let me make videos of every table I make as well. <laughs> that would be the same video every week, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. is a kind of fun art project doing the same build video every single time and see oh, I man. saw that video if of you that. were the audience go insane first it would only be a matter of time before I put myself through the table so <laughs> but so, someone has that level of commitment I, I remember seeing this uh, high school teacher wearing the same sweater for all the photos for like 20, 30 years that you could see him like f- from a 20 year old out of uh, school and up until he was almost a pensioner and he was using that same brown sweater for the day they were taking the school photo. <laughs> and that's the level of commitment I like. And uh, yeah, you could do something like that. You produce the same YouTube video for 10 years, like you know, just slightly change <laughs> some minor details. <laughs> Maybe you should do one every year around uh, the same time of the year. Do the same thing. 
No. No, I don't. I don't, I don't no. need to be reminded of uh, <laughs> time. Basically, uh, no. I remember that it was it last week. There was this fad on Instagram where people posted uh, pictures from when they were eighteen, and that was also the rage on the bad audio group. And uh, yeah, I found one, and oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a. Uh, it's probably nice for the grandkids at some point to see, but I, I, I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those feel mostly like a time capsule. Of, I mean, because uh, a lot of us are at the same age, roughly. So you see... Thanks, KJ. The, yeah, roughly. <laughs> 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 so uh, a, a picture from when we were young, that's roughly the, the same year it was taken. So you get to see the style and... Yeah, see what kind of kids we all were, and that's. Yeah, I wonder if we would have gotten along at that point as well. <laughs> that seems unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit. Of, I was more of a dick then. <laughs> Is that possible? Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I used to consider myself speaking with um, black speech bubbles uh, at that. Point because yeah I I wasn't that bad of a kid but I don't think I was I I think I was fun I thought I was funnier than I actually was and I was just mean at sometimes so yeah <laughs> we were young isn't that young just people a are description stupid. of kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you say um, going back to the projects every year. Doing the same project once a year, I did do. I did start uh, house projects last year, so I do have a theme of starting projects, which stopped me from doing YouTube videos and my own fun projects at this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> have you learned now? No. <laughs> Will you put the reminder in the calendar for next year? Just say no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few house uh, house jobs uh, stacking up as well, but uh, we'll see if we can put those off till spring, maybe. Got a, a new bathroom yeah, I mean, and a pergola to build. The house is not going anywhere, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you need those long-term projects so that you have something to do. Yeah, and sometimes <laughs> you just buy yourself a new table, so it, it takes your mind off, and it's it's something new and fresh in your living room, and it feels <laughs> nice. Like, all right, it's, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> we had a. Um... Me and Michelle had a, a night away at the weekend uh, at a hotel, and the following day we it was it, it was in the area where I grew up. We went off to uh, Sherwood Forest, Robin Hood country, yeah. and uh, saw the major oak. And the uh, the major oak, this very very old oak tree, has just got so many steel props and wires and polyfiller holding it all together. Now <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at it and thought, hashtag scrap wood build off. <laughs> <laughs> Was wasn't that? No, that was in Scotland, wasn't it? It was this one tree in a valley, oh, yeah. where, where where some guy Sorry, just cut yeah. it down, and it got like <laughs> the entire country was furious. And yeah, just just be careful what you say here, of all the <laughs> tensions still run high on that one. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but under, understandable. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, if if it was on my land and someone cut it down, I was I was going to be fuming. I mean, it's. It's one of those things you can't just rebuild it, and I mean, you can make people pay for it, but I mean, you can't grow a big tree back in your lifetime. So if it's gone, it's gone. That's right. The tree yeah. is the tree is growing back though. <laughs> yeah, it was but, coming yeah. out from the same root, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they often do. It's literally just been coppiced. <laughs> to be fair. Ah, so they just pruned it. He was. It's were probably a <laughs> horticulturist then. They they do stuff like that, you know. <laughs> got a bit excited <laughs> yeah. well I heard someone tree. said you should yeah. prune it two thirds or was it one third and I think yeah. he miscalculated <laughs> truth be told he's probably added another hundred years to the life of that tree <laughs> <laughs> yeah it should be Re rejuvenated him. it with all the <laughs> yeah. new growth but just to be clear I don't condone what he did <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, it's kind of weird. So, some people's uh, relation to to trees. And, uh, I mean, I, around this neighborhood, a lot of it happens too often. I feel when a, a new family moves in, and the first thing they do is just cut down mm-hmm. most of the trees on the in the yard. It's and, the same in every housing estate in England. I feel. But yeah. you know, any tree, any big trees in the gardens just get chopped down just in case it attacks the foundations or falls on your house. I yeah. mean, trees last years; they don't just do it every day, do they? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, and there I mean, there are also yeah. signs and measures you can take. I mean, uh, yeah, you don't need to cut yeah. them down the first thing you do, but uh, yeah, and I mean, at least people can wait a year or something like that to see how they feel about it. Because I mean, yeah. for us, the the trees that give us shade are. I mean, they're a blessing yeah, yeah. in the summertime. So, yeah, and we're trying to force <laughs> to force some trees to grow as fast as possible to give us a new shade to to replace the ones that the uh, previous owners killed just before they moved yeah. out. There's a, a country lane not far away from here, which is higher up than this these these houses, and you can see all the houses. And my house looks like an, an oasis <laughs> because I've got a, you know a 35 foot tree in the garden, a 25 foot tree in the garden. <laughs> Yeah. And there's no, not others on the estate at all. It's just crazy. Yeah, we are working on that, and uh, yeah, we I think I counted like seven or eight trees now coming up, and some of them have passed three meters. So I mean, you can start calling them trees and not a a bush. Um, <laughs> but on that subject of cutting things down, uh, I just remembered this story. Um, a few years ago in in Norway there was this rocky formation that uh, locally was just called uh, the troll's deck because it had a, <laughs> it had a resemblance of uh, of something um and of course it uh, someone posted a picture on Instagram or something and it went kind of viral and then just one night someone was up there and just cut it off and then of course they were writing in the newspaper and this was not just uh, the local newspaper; it was national news for weeks. And of course, they they, they established a, a trust fund, or, or people could uh, donate money and so on. So they actually had a company going up there, building scaffolding and bringing equipment, and they hoisted it back in place and put steel reinforcement into there to recreate <laughs> the the mountain shape. And <laughs> so yeah, they probably spent a couple of hundred thousand. Did you, not, did you not have a Glenn back then to uh, alert the press to the fact that it was you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't cut things down, I, I erect them. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, that, I th- didn't we discuss this? Because it's also been an issue because in... In various parts in Norway, you have these uh, runes that has been carved into stones, um, like proper ancient one. And someone at some point had an idea about. I mean, I mean that's just ancient art. And today we have angle grinders with batteries, so people have started bringing these small angle grinders with them uh, on hiking, and they're just carving their names into rock. And I mean, <laughs> that's kind of permanent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And people have been like, please don't. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> once you say please don't in the media, then of course all the kids is like, where's my dad's angle grinder? I'm out on a mission. <laughs> so now you have cock written all over the mountains everywhere. Should <laughs> uh, have a hobby, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad I have my workshop. I mean, uh, I, I would not be uh, safe running around in the free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so looking forward to getting my workshop back. What's not helped the situation for me as well is I've had a... Michelle bought a load of scrap wood back from her mum's house, which is just dumped in the workshop at the moment <laughs> as well. <laughs> Tripping over old drawers and things. But uh, So she's entering the competition then? Uh, Michelle is having thoughts about entering the competition. I'm going to enter. And then tonight she came in and said, we should do a collaboration. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, you should. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> That, that well, being said, though, I, I understand, Michelle. Um, I've been a bit on the fence myself because I went outside here the other day and I just took a look around. And this doesn't look like Australia. And I realized it's not. So what's the point in entering? Because we are outside of the boundaries and I can build other stuffs. That's interesting. Out of new things. I could actually buy materials to build something <laughs> with. I don't need to go through the scrap pile. I think the rules of the scrap would build up are so lax you could pretty much do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've seen some of the definitions of scrap yeah. wood. I mean, it is. It is stretchable. I mean, going to, just going to the lumber yard, yeah, this board is a bit crooked. There's your scrap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this sheet of uh, plywood has one corner shift off. Yeah, that's scrap. Scrap. Yeah. <laughs> All that being said, I mean, going to the hardware store and trying to find some decent straight materials for projects, I mean, I, I would argue that <laughs> a lot of it is, is scrap wood off the get go because. Hey, true, oh, true. Jesus Christ, someone has lost their pride in their work at the lumber yard or. I'm not sure if it is at the lumber yard or if it is something that it's, it's not taken care of properly during transportation and storage but but someone has uh, made a poopy on the fence do you know a big big shout out to my local branch of wicks their, their timber seems to be pretty good most of the time good plywood nice. yeah the stud work timber's all right so yeah no grumbles from my local shop and i get a 10 percent discount as well <laughs> <laughs> so i'll be sponsored <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I wish no, had, no, no, we're not sponsored. <laughs> Just I me. wish we had a proper lumber yard. Uh, I mean, someone, as you said, uh, takes pride in their work and actually has a selection of things and, and have something that is decent and not just the cheapest pine you can find. That is like one in ten boards are straight and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, we, we do have one not far from me but it's i mean they have some decent materials but their clientele is still carpenters so they they have just nicer variants of construction wood and yes you can get the odd slab of oak or something like that but i mean if you're a furniture maker they still have a bit to go i've, I've seen some of the lumber stores in like northwest sides of the states I mean it's like a candy store going in there but yeah I don't I haven't seen anything like that in Norway we've got a few sawmills around here I've got all of the wood to build my workshop from a, a sawmill I think it was about a third or less on the price as well it came that's, direct from the mill that's the thing though I mean there are <coughs> sawmills here as well but then you need to go and talk to people yeah, that's hard. I just want to go into a big store and be left alone, and uh, the price should be on a neat <laughs> tag under there, and you just pick it up. And if they have a self checkout counter, it's like, whoa! <laughs> <Saturday."> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm sure there are some, but then you have to know where to find them firstly, <laughs> because it feels like like very few things that is. I mean the the maker kind of things with the tools and uh, materials and that sort of thing. They're not online for some reason. I mean that's like you trying to get a handyman. You have to call them. You can't yeah. send an email or something like that because they're <laughs> they're still in the stone ages. It feels like my favorite sawmill has they they are online. You can't order online, but they have a, a full stock list on there and pictures Ooh, nice. as well to help you along Ooh. but that's so, even worse it's like teasing you but you can't have it it's like look all the nice things you want but you have to come and talk to us I hate that <laughs> I rang them up <laughs> and they delivered it all for free it was lovely <laughs> nice yeah nice yeah the, there's apparently there's this there's another sawmill which I've not been to not far away from here and that's where the piece of chestnut came from and they have all their pieces of wood priced in the shop you can, and online but you can't order online again they just show you them but uh, all the slabs and things are all priced there so that's nice yeah 
it's nothing worse than having to ask the price of something, is it? Because you, you almost feel half obliged to buy it once you've asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you're afraid that your reaction will show what you feel about that price. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many series did you say? <laughs> yeah, I... I thought that a little when I saw the price of that piece of chestnut, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, read online that uh, there's a problem in England with beach poop tomatoes. What? Uh, <laughs> that uh, in some places where the, uh, what's it called? Uh, where they clean the, the water, the, clean the sewage uh, that they're actually overspilling and uh, sending some sewage out into lakes and and uh, oceans and then because the the tomato seeds are so small they pass uh, through all the filtration okay. so the tomato seeds from people's poop are growing <laughs> on the beaches <laughs> <laughs> I've not come across that <laughs> I think it was in Kent ah, or okay. something like oh, that you have to ask Andy Pew that's his neck of the woods Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm bad at geography, uh, but still, uh, it's a fun thing to be thinking. I mean, because I mean, you can't grow, you ba- basically can't grow tomatoes in in Sweden, maybe in the south part, uh, without any help. Yeah, uh, okay. but but in England, apparently, they just grow spontaneously on the beach. <laughs> so that's yeah. that sounds nice. They do germinate in uh, people's gardens, you know, where they've let tomatoes fall from the previous year's crop. But they always germinate a little bit too late and don't amount to anything, basically. Ah, yeah. I mean, it does give a extra layer to the word ger- germinate, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it really does. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of talking about. Is it is it safe to eat poop tomatoes? Sure is. Yeah, it, I mean, it should be fancier, I think, like those coffee beans that pop through uh, some <laughs> yeah. road. I was going to say it. I mean, just just harvest them and sell them at some uh, fancy uh, store somewhere and say it's uh, organically uh, digested uh, something. And they'll, they'll pay ten the times. Yeah, o- Organically digested heirloom variety of tomato. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> yeah, but those those coffee beans, they're not they're not they don't pass through the animal and then germinate, they pass through the animal and then ground up, aren't they? And roasted, I think. Yeah. That that's yeah. a bit minging, isn't it? <laughs> I mean do they I don't want to Google it, but Yes, of course they are roasting them, but do, do they clean them first? Because there is probably something about the acidity and some reaction I don't know. But I like they coffee, do, but not that much. They they do clean them, but it's uh, it makes them extra special. They're all licked clean by the locals. Licked <laughs> 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 you know. out of a skunk's bum. <laughs> And the worst thing is, it's probably the best paid job ever in that community, and people are probably lighting up to uh, become Bloody a certified. Bloody needs to be, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, very much. <laughs> oh. Oh. Please change the subject. <laughs> I mean, it's it's weird. Oh, I, yeah. It's many years ago. We uh, went hiking in the mountains of Peru. And, of course, at the end of the uh, the journey, we ventured up to that uh, Machu Picchu, the big ruins up there. And we oh, did, nice. like, a, a three-day hike over a mountain pass, um, like 5,400 meters, I think, the, the peak was at. And, of course, in, in Norway, you have that uh, hiking the mountains culture and you you always carry your own backpack. And of course, we went over there. It was like a, an arranged trip. So, of course, when we came there, we were told to just size down your luggage to just what you need for the day. And the rest of the luggage will be carried by Sherpas. And the Norwegians in the group is like, we don't want anyone else to carry our own luggage. That that feels a bit uh, 
but then the guides told us that this is it's the best paying job in the region and hi michelle Woo! <laughs> and, just uh, hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> oh a guest yeah. special guest michelle ta-da and a one-eyed dog <laughs> Bye, Dave. <laughs> Bye, Michelle. Bye. <laughs> and this week's special guest, Michelle and the one-eyed dog, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on telling us about your Sherpas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it turns out it, it's the best paying job. And it is also an honor to become a Sherpa so so you have to wait for years because there is I mean uh, they have a set amount and there's a rigid structure there so the people who are carrying our luggage I mean they were at the top of the food chain there so they I mean relative to uh, the country they were living to they they earned more money than we did back home so like in comparison so uh, then you didn't feel as bad and of course we had breakfast and then we started walking and then of course they tidied up camp and brought all the uh, the luggage and after an hour and a half they caught up to us and they just passed us with like <laughs> and previously they could carry like 40 50 kilos on their back but they now have regulations saying that they can only carry was it 25 or 30 kilos or something so that's the limit where they're at and they just blasted past us and we just had these very light day packs and I thought like, all right, I'll see how far I can uh, keep their pace. 10 meters. I mean, it's it's <laughs> weird at those heights being deprived of oxygen. It's, it's, like, it's like a wall hitting you and there's nothing left. So you, you just ended up t- like taking teeny tiny steps and concentrating on breathing so yeah those are a special breed of people born and raised up in those heights and then but the funny thing is uh, one of the guides said that if he go down to sea level uh, a few times a year then he struggles at that level because they have acclimatized to uh, the heights so they they can actually get instead of like height sickness they can get uh, a really low so to speak so yeah it's interesting (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, we didn't um, know today. <laughs> we we visited a coffee farm as well, but no, uh, no exotic uh, animal droppings. Uh. I don't know. Did you get to sample some coffee beans? The locals might have been having a bit of a laugh with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's like Oompo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do actually fancy a cup of coffee now, but yeah, weirdly enough. It's too late. Too late for coffee now. We're talking of travelling. Doing a bit of travelling next week? Next week? It is next week, isn't it? It is, but it's uh, late next week. It's true. Yeah, it is next week. Yeah. Yes, yes, it does. But I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, Well, it's uh, uh, the calendar is going too fast. I mean, well, I'm not gonna. Listen. I'm not gonna travel that far, so I'm. I'm pleased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an easy one for you, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. I can't say it's hard for me either, but it's, it takes a while. How long are you on the train for, KJ? Five hours. Gosh. But it's. I mean, it's comfy, and I. Yeah. I hope. I hope to have some video to edit or something like that so. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, if you're bored I can always upload some raw footage so you can edit a video <laughs> <laughs> I think last year I, just, I I tried to make a dent in my YouTube Watch Later list so yeah, that's something you can do as well yeah that's a good idea See, that may, maybe if, if I film some stuff this year as well, I might edit it on the train back and maybe have the video ready <laughs> in a reasonable time <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> instead of like uh, in spring twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? 
But yeah, it's uh, it's starting to fill up. I see uh, people far and wide is actually uh, giving notice that they will be uh, coming. So it's going to be nice. Yeah. Mm. Let's meet up with a few of the listeners. Yeah. Yeah. A few of the CMOs. That's good. Try not to load get too all drunk. the social batteries so we actually can be nice to people <laughs> and not <laughs> just want to run away from a crowd. <laughs> That'd be fine. Yeah, that's a really nice thing, though, being in the dead center of Oslo. I mean, and the itinerary is relatively slack. So, I mean, when your batteries go a bit low, you can actually uh, pull away for a, for an hour or something and find a quiet corner and have a coffee somewhere else and just recharge <laughs> a bit or go back to the hotel could... room. I thought you were going to say find a quiet corner and have a cry there for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's well. Yeah, that that is also possible. They have these quiet uh, booths around the venue, so yeah. <laughs> the crying booths. <laughs> it's a Scandinavian thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they cry because they're happy or sad. <laughs> that's uh, the game that everybody else plays. <laughs> sometimes they don't even know themselves. <laughs> 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 Dear. Yeah, but it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Yeah, I'm yeah, very and, uh, much looking forward to it. Really do, and it's now it's official also because they've uh, they put our pictures and everything up on the on the program. So there there is no way out now. No, just a cancelled flight or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Covid, <laughs> yep, yep. Covid. Yeah, you can just pretty much keep quiet about that nowadays, can't you? You can Nobody always really hold. Anymore, do they? <laughs> yeah, but I mean that's a good thing that there, there's three of us. So, I mean, two of us can be gone, and the third one can do it by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Let it be, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm home with sick kids. You didn't make the train, and I'm glad. All right, guess I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> you really could. And you want it in Norwegian, you say? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Shortest podcast ever. <laughs> but you know enough now to fill 40 minutes, don't you? I, if I repeat myself, lots. <laughs> yeah, that's a, but that's a trick to use to, uh, to keep the audience... Uh, <laughs> it probably would be manageable actually wouldn't it doing it by myself because we've got the listeners there so I could just get a couple of special guests on with me yeah, yeah. actually that <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably would work right. out fine yeah I mean Rasmus is going to be there he's a he's an old hand at podcast he could do it on his own couldn't he yeah yeah. I mean he maybe we should yeah should, should, should we bring them all on stage yeah <laughs> Like, and they go to the pub. Really make the audio <laughs> engineer's day uh, yeah. <laughs> interesting. Come on up, guys. <laughs> and then slowly move off stage ourselves to yeah. see what happens. <laughs> see if anybody notices. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they do. <laughs> no, no, nothing bad's going to happen. Everything's going to be fine. Yeah. yeah. We still have plenty of time to figure out what we're going to talk about. And... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, making maybe, obviously, or yeah. yeah. I mean, we've done the podcast a day early and we're struggling. <laughs> uh, the thing, though, is, uh, I mean, uh, we're down to 40 minutes, so it's it should really have been the half pint. So if we... We can record the full episode early in the morning, and then when you go on stage, we're already at half pint. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. There was a thing on the. It's, it's, it gave the times, but then it did say three o'clock as well. So I don't know whether we've got to do a second set. Oh, I didn't. Michelle, no Michelle noticed that. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe they cut us in two, so we have to do the first one with a major cliffhanger, and then. Yeah. 
that's going to work well, isn't it? Because I can never remember the cliffhanger. So I mean, we're going to the half pint and it's just 30 seconds no, later. That, that, I mean, that doesn't matter. The cliffhanger is from the first part to draw people into the second part. I mean, if it's yeah. something completely different, they're already there. So what else are they going to do? Leave? <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't finished uh, figured out what the cliffhanger from last week's half pint is. The letter T on my uh, sheet of paper. <laughs> well there you have it I, I forgot all about it until you just brought it up so yeah so what you're saying are we, are we heading to the half pipe now I mean time wise we, we are but I mean once you've cut <laughs> everything down to a reasonable timeline how much are we left with uh, who cares that will be fine exactly right, who cares Let's head over to the half pint, KJ. <laughs> you love that saying, don't you? <laughs> oh, yes. I absolutely love it when people say that in podcasts. <laughs> All right, then. Bye. 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 Bye.